can't help it. God makes me want to sing. I can't help it. God makes me want to sing. God makes me feel so good. I can do most anything. and kings we're all precious no one less or more we've all got the same treasure in store that's why i'm loving every living thing i can't help it god makes me want to sing of you were really rocking. It's fun, it's fun, 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 fun. Okay. So <clears throat> I know that I, I loved celebrating the new year and I was reminded by an astrologer lady that I was on my recent um, Egypt trip with that the new year is really on the, the uh, spring equinox. That's the new year. And Aries brings in the New Year's. And I thought, well, since I'm in Aries, well, then that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love starting things. And then you go, I'll handle it. Uh, how many of you know that you're a, a, a starter or an ender? And some of you are just middlers. Well, I shouldn't say it, just middlers. We need middlers. 
But how many of you know that some of you really like it if it's already started and you love playing in it, and then some people really like to end things? How many of you know you like to end things? Tell me about your love life, and then I'll tell you if you really like to end things. <laughs> all right. Or your job history or whatever. I mean, it's okay. It takes all kinds. That's what I'm going to talk about today. It really does take all kinds. But when I was thinking about that, I thought, you know, it would be good to have kind of a new spring, let's, let's reassess life kind of talk. Why not? The tulips are up, not at our house, but I've seen them down <laughs> in the valley and in, in, around here, tulips and, and daffodils. and It's just time to reassess, I believe. What I want to talk about is, are you allowing yourself to have a bigger God? Because if you want a bigger life, you need a bigger God. And what a bigger life is, is a life in which you consider options and ideas and dreams and you notice yourself moving towards them with confidence. As opposed to, well, that's an idea. How many of you just sort of like, that's an idea? A nice idea. Wish I could have. How many of you go there? You start and then you immediately finish the conversation in your own head. How many of you there? Uh, it, it actually, do you know that truth heals? <laughs> it really does. Truth heals. Like, not me. Uh, first service really understood their own uh, neuroses. <laughs> and they left transformed. <laughs> Just to say it out loud. So maybe you don't know it in yourself. How many of you know that friends that live in a bunker and you talk to them about life, how life could be, and they close the door, and they've got this little thing that they open up like a speakeasy, and they say, I'm not listening. How many of you know friends like that, that they will not go beyond the life that they have? How many of you know that there's a bit of you in that? Now, you may not be in a bunker. You're willing to entertain all sorts of ideas. You just have a picket fence in which you greet ideas, but you don't open the gate and walk out and, and entertain them, really. And you certainly don't let the ideas in because they might change you. And how many of you have an invisible fence like we do for our dog? We have an invisible fence because he's, he's a runner and a visitor. And he would take off and come back three, three hours later after leaping up on on cars and, and going into open doors, <laughs> trying, to enter, trying to get other dogs to go with him. Hey, I know, let's have a pack and we'll run around the neighborhood. Wouldn't it be fun? Neighbors were not enthusiastic about him visiting. <laughs> and we didn't want to put him in the backyard because it was very small. So we have five acres, so we put a, one of those fences in. You don't see it. But he's got a little collar, and he knows where it is. And he gets within five feet or ten feet. He won't get even within ten feet because it sort of reminds him not to go farther. Some of us live in consciousness with invisible fences. We look so freaking free, don't we? We're spiritual. <laughs> we can do anything except change our attitudes Sometimes, how many of you know that you get close to a little bit of a shift and you back on up? And nobody sees the fence, but you know not to go in that territory. You know not to reconsider what you're doing and call it good. Do you know that that is a huge manifestation to know that your life is already good and it doesn't need to change to be heaven? How many of you know that, that every time you come up against doubt, it's just a call for you to have greater faith? But how many of you, when you get to doubt, you back up? 
How many of you do that? So let's see some hands. All of that is, when we want a bigger life, a freer life, is we need a bigger God. Because God has a way of expanding us because we connect to it within us. And as we get a bigger God, we become larger in our view of ourself. Our view of ourself must change. And if our view of ourself hasn't changed lately, you can go through all sorts of processes and, and you can go through, you know, weekend retreats and you can all puff yourself up and how many of you have done that for a couple of times? And then you come home and you think, I'm, there, I'll be, I'm different forever and then you're back to your same old self. What really will change us forever is our connection to God. And the greater a connection, the greater we let God reveal itself in us, and we just get a bigger God. And then we start to have real healing. See, a lot of times the human within our yard of consciousness, it could even be five acres of consciousness, could even be in a state of consciousness, but it's still in the confines of our view of ourselves. Sometimes what we want to do is just fix the place up so it's more comfortable. Not be free to travel or entertain, or entertain new ideas. And sometimes we want to fix things by bringing something in or maybe even taking a small trip out, calling it a big deal. <laughs> They're laughing. Instead of just, I thought it was funny too. <laughs> Instead of just allowing ourselves to be a, a, bigger, a bigger expression of life. I'll give you an example. First of all, I need to say, Ernest Holmes said, and he, God, he, was so, he was so precise. In his final years, he would do these talks on Tuesdays, the Tuesday talks. And many of them showed up in this book called... Um, Beverly Hills Lectures, because he invited people to his home, and he did these talks. And he said, you know, 95% of the practitioners just want to fix things. But if you have a spiritual revelation, you're healed, and you don't need a fix anymore. And that, that, that seems like a, yeah, your mind can kind of go like this, but I want to give you a story so that you can grok better what I'm talking about. And now you know how old I am since I used the word grok. <laughs> um, many, many years ago, I worked for the phone company when it was the phone company, when it was the phone company. I was an account executive, and um, it was in the early 80s, and the group of accounts that I was to service and to upgrade were, was real estate. And real estate was kind of in the tank. Why? Because <laughs> interest rates were not 10%, they were 12. And so when I hear people complaining about four, I go, rah, 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 rah. you know, I really don't care. <laughs> you know, it's like, think about 12%. Nobody was able to buy. It was just so expensive. And I'm supposed to upgrade the phone systems for real estate companies that were going under. It was not fun. Yes, I made sales. Why? Because I know how to pray. <laughs> God and I were just like this. But it wasn't fun. It wasn't satisfying. It wasn't fulfilling. I, it was a grind. And so I decided, I decided to fix it. And because I had been in nonprofits and done really well in nonprofits previously, I mean, really well, I thought, I'll just go back to nonprofits. And I'd learned a lot from the phone company, so I figured out the best thing to do was to be an account executive for a nonprofit. That would solve everything. I'd love to go to work, I'd do good work, I'd be helping people, I'd make money, not as much, but still, I'd be happy, it'd be wonderful. 
So I sent out these resumes and and uh, cover letters, and they were beautiful, and I paid to have them look good, and I sent them out to every nonprofit around, and especially if they advertised, and even if they didn't, and I was, I canvassed Seattle. Nobody called me. Now, can I just say that is a miracle? Because I had credentials. I had a background. I had people saying, she's wonderful. I had, I had proof that I was good, and nobody even called. And I, I was like, first I was crushed, and then I was like, this is weird. This is really weird. So I said, okay, God, bucko, which is what I sometimes call the divine <laughs> when I'm upset. <laughs> you, you know that it's about having a personal relationship, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's honey bunny boo and sometimes it's bucko. So, bucko. Obviously, my plan's not working, but you know I want to be happy. I want to have fun. I want to love the people I'm working with. I want to feel like I'm doing something good. I want to be satisfied and fulfilled and I want to make some money. So you figure it out. Now, the, <laughs> that little... No, truly, that did happen. But that was a revelation, a spiritual revelation. The spiritual revelation was, Kathy Ann, stop trying to make things happen and let something happen. See the revelation? And within a week, all my accounts got redone. And they put me in a different department. And the accounts I was to service were nonprofits and churches, and I was in ministerial school. So I got to use my expertise in nonprofits to help nonprofits beyond their, their phone needs. And I got to talk to churches about how they ran churches, and I was in ministerial school. God had a bigger idea, and I got paid a whole lot more money, and I got to keep my, my stocks and, you know, in, in the phone company. I mean, like, God was awesome. That's a revelation. When we have those kind of revelations, it's that your own small thinking that keeps you stuck. And then our small thinking is, I'll figure out a way to make it better. How many of you have done that? <laughs> uh, to get a bigger God, we need a more complete connection. Back to Ricky Byers. I used to think that I needed somebody. I used to think I needed a new job. I used to think I needed a new something something. How many of you know, I used to think I need this, I need that, I need this. No, what we need is our connection to God. And that's what I want to talk to you today about, is how to have a connection that might work better for you than other connections. Because we all have that issue, don't we? How, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. A lot of people meditate. Home doesn't do it for me. Oh, mm -mm. Some other ways just don't do it for me. But when I, when I, now that I know how I really connect, I realize that some things have always inspired me to feel God's presence, to be energized by God's presence. So I want to assist you in doing the same. So... In a moment, we're going to start putting some things on the, the not quite yet, Danny. We're going to put some things on the uh, screen behind me. And instead of writing things down because you'll be writing a bunch, just take your phone and take a picture. And that way, it will be yours and you don't have to be writing. And you can consider what we're talking about later. First of all, we've got to figure out, oh, and I've got to tell you how I found this. This came from... January 2008, Horse Illustrated, <laughs> because I read these things, and I know that all of you are happy that I found my hobby of choice, aren't you? Yeah. All right. And this is four different horsonalities. <laughs> four different horsonalities. And I read it, and I went, I can use this. I can use this. 
So what would it be like for personalities? Let's look. So let's put our personality survey slide number one on the screen. And you get to ask yourself, let's go horizontally. Are you a thinker or a feeler? And if you have to think too much about this, <laughs> you're a thinker. <laughs> if you're, because a thinker is, is logical, they're anecdotal, they love words, they're curious, they're cautious, and they really need to think it over. Or you're a feeler. Uh, is, how are you doing? Oh, feeler. <laughs> Feelers like like patterns, they like they they pay attention to how they feel about things. They are relationship oriented, and they have and follow gut reactions. Let's go vertically. <clears throat> Introvert or extrovert. So, and the words I'm going to use because this is what you would use for horses. Because in if we were going to go introvert, extrovert for people, we'd say, do you think to talk or talk to think, but Horses don't talk, so we have to get rid of that. If we're going to go on based on horse wisdom, an introvert is introspective, reflective, and kind of lowish energy. They can stop and smell the roses. You know, when I think about it, that would definitely be Tim, my husband. Even though he'd say he's sort of an introvert, extrovert, no, no, no. He can go down... I remember it sort of set the whole thing. We were just starting dating, and we went to a grocery store to pick up a few things. Me, I'm going to go in and get out. Him, look at all the mustard. <laughs> Can you imagine this much mustard? No! <laughs> Grab one and let's go! <laughs> I, Extrovert, they are experienced enthusiasts. They need to move, they have higher energy, and they want to go to the next thing. Can we just move on to the next thing? Next. So, ask yourself, are you an introvert or an extrovert? And then put yourself in a quadrant. Are you an introverted feeler, an introverted thinker, an extroverted thinker, an extroverted feeler? One, you're one of four. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not a lot of that stuff, because in sometimes I want to move on, but I really am reflective. So I have, you have to weigh these things. So where are you on, this, on the graph, and which quadrant are you in, knowing that you probably, since you are whole beings, you probably visit every quadrant. But what's your main quadrant? When you have your main quadrant, raise your hand. And then we'll go on. So we're going on to number two. If you know your main quadrant, then you know what your preferred spiritual practice would be. Or what I'll put it this way, what will feed you the most. For introverted feelers, meditation and prayer really will feed you. To slow down... And to, and to move into meditation. I have this book. I don't think this might be the only one left, and you'd have to buy it off of this table. Finding the Quiet is an amazing book for, for medi <laughs> meditating. Let's move on. <laughs> meditating at any time. It is wonderful. Uh, but there's other meditations. So there's Monday med meditation. We have a, Monday, a free med Monday meditation group. Um, and prayer. If, if, pr if this really sings to your soul, think about starting to take some classes and becoming a prayer practitioner. Because I know that when I work with practitioners and that group prayer stuff just spirals up. It's an amazing thing. And it works really well for that quadrant. The next quadrant is the thinker introvert. That is study. But you don't just study quantum physics, which is fun. But you all... <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Sadna and I will continue to study quantum physics. But what really inspires me 
is the mystics, the monks, and the masters that had such a high level of consciousness that you get something from them just by reading what they had to say. Oh my goodness, now that, that, blah, 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 that's me. You know, I'm gonna say it again because you loved it so much. Here you go. I know I've just been watching you wait for it. I sniff a few pages of Emma Curtis Hopkins and I'm higher in a kite. I mean, just, <laughs> I said that for her because I said it first service and only a few people understand. And the rest of you know what grok means. Um, <laughs> you didn't know what grok means, did you? No, well, that's the age difference. Uh, I mean, really, I can be so high on just study, just the study. It's so powerful for me. Now, for those of you that are extroverted thinkers, you are called, th take a deep breath, you're called to be a leader. You're called to be a leader of a cause greater than yourself. Greater than yourself. You take a situation bigger than you think you can handle and you handle it. Tim Brinsfield is a leader because he inspires us and leads us into, into making sure that at least two families a year have better housing than they did before. At least two families. Another leader is, and you wouldn't think of her because I don't know if she knows, sees herself this way because she seems, you know, just, just Marilyn, Marilyn Gregory. I'm telling you, she is a heat-seeking missile about something that she wants, and she will enroll you. And what I can say is, just don't look. If you don't look at her, she won't enroll you, but you keep your head down and you walk really fast, or she will grab you and sign you up. <laughs> and she is high energy, and she is a thinker. Have you watched her ask questions? I mean, oof, she will, mm. If you are an extroverted feeler, you are called to be of service to others because it just feels so good. It, it inspires you. You get helpers high. It, it's, you love to see what spirit does through you to be of service to others, and as their faces light up, your face lights up. It's wonderful. Now, because we all have different gifts, we also have different, uh, what can I say, ways of showing up that fulfill spirit's purpose for us as a community or us as the world, as that matter. So, next slide. If you are an introverted feeler, you're called to be the breath and the peace of God. You bring peace to any situation, and you breathe it out. You are a peacekeeper, a peace provider. If you are an introverted thinker, you are called to be the voice and the truth of God. You take ancient wisdom and put it in modern words. If you are an extroverted thinker, you are called to be the mind and the power of God. You are here to show the way. You are a modern Moses. And if you are an extroverted feeler, you are here to, to be the heart and the love of God. You are the hands of God. You are the face of God for others. What a wonderful calling. Now, here's, here's the deal. As you do this, you connect with God, and that connection expands your view of yourself because all those fences the bunkers the you know the the windowless basements that people live in or the big estates with the barbed wire fences all all of that is just self identification and as we identify more with spirit our self-identification expands and expands and expands. And we can consider this idea and we can consider that idea 
And we might even go try that idea on. We're free to. And we can try that idea on. We're free to. And doubt is no longer the invisible fence of our life. Because I bet just even this last week, some of you thought of something new. You ventured out of your consciousness estate, but you doubted you could do it. How many of you know you had some doubt last week? That starts to disappear because God's presence fires faith within you. And you can start to say, my God is making me omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. Now, that's some big words. That's the words we use for God. Oh, no, 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 no. If God is everywhere and it is centered within us, if God is, the, is, is that which is centered everywhere and circumference is nowhere, then you become by its action, because you're connecting with it, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. And you're willing to consider things and try them on. And if it doesn't work out, you'll, you'll try something else on. But you don't like, ooh, ooh, how many of you? It's like a two-step. But it's two steps forward and three steps back. And you, that's, that begins to dissipate because God is expanding in you. You're getting a bigger God. And God is getting a bigger channel through which it can do its marvelous work. Oh, that is nice. There's one last. <laughs> There's Marilyn Gregory. Hi, honey, I talked about you. I actually was talking about you. Didn't think you'd be here, but there you is. Okay, she's in that corner, so everybody leave out that door. I'm telling you. But she is a vortex. She will draw you in. If you start feeling yourself going like this, it's Marilyn Gregory. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, there is another step, too, besides your spiritual connection. And that is to just once in a while just look up. And you'll discover that you'll have new thoughts. Well, maybe no thoughts. But there will be such freedom in that. And that, too, is a connection to spirit. So let us pray. Oh, I'm so grateful for this day. Thank you, sweet spirit, for this day. And for the opportunity for us to connect in personal ways that work for us. Because that connection is thrilling. And is healing. And it is revitalizing. And all I can say is thank you, God. And so it is.